Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Soul Talk. This is Leora Mandel. I'll be joined with Rabbi David Aaron after the break. Do you know anybody who you would define as being exceptional? There are people who are wonderful, who are great, but then there are those people who we just see as exceptional, exceptional in some area of life. Maybe they're exceptionally smart. Maybe they're exceptionally successful in their business. Maybe they are exceptionally knowledgeable in any given area. Maybe they are an exceptional sage, a tzaddik, and we think, wow, this person is really, you know, someone who's usually, I think we'd say when they're exceptional, they're above and beyond the norm. Now, the question is, how does one become exceptional? Is this something that just comes naturally to a person? Some people are just gifted with exceptional abilities, and as long as they tap into them, they can be. Or is it something that everybody, so to speak, can achieve? And if so, how would one go about achieving the ability or the I don't know if you call it a trait, the actualization of being exceptional. Are there certain traits that people who are exceptional have that someone who is maybe, so to speak, more average, most of us are average, that's how averages are made, is by the norms. Uh, maybe we could tap into some of those traits that would enable us too to tap into the ability to be more exceptional in any given area of life. I guess another question that we'd have to ask is, is, is it a goal? for us to try to be more exceptional? Is it okay to be, so to speak, average, to be doing well in life, well in whatever area or aspect of life that is something that we're focusing on? Um, is that okay? Meaning that everybody can be exceptional. On the other hand, I think all of us know that there's certain parts of ourselves that have a capacity to be more. There's something within us, each one of us, I definitely believe, has a certain potential for inner greatness that is different than any other person's ability to achieve greatness question is, is it something that we have to recognize in ourselves? Is it obvious? Is it sort of like a trait that is like, well, this is that trait that if I would actually put a little effort into, I can definitely be the greater version of myself? Or is it something that maybe isn't always so obvious that maybe if I have the right perspective or the right tools, I can tap into within myself? Or if we're parents and have children that we can help them tap into their own personal greatness so these are some questions that I want to address and examine with the rabbi um, when we return to really understand what is it that makes someone exceptional? How can we also tap into maybe some of those tools and traits? Is this a goal? And separate from other people out there, just when I look into myself, how can I tap into and achieve my own inner greatness and my own inner balance? When we return, Soul Talk, Rabbi David Aaron and Laura Mandel. Israel is located in one of the most volatile areas in the world. Israel is an island of stability and a sea of war and unrest. In the midst of this turmoil, Israel stands out as a beacon of order and human progress. Each week we update you on what's happening in this, the Jewish state, a true light unto the nations. This is Jay Shapiro. Join me every Thursday on Israel News Talk Radio. Welcome to Soul Talk. This is Leora Mandel with Rabbi David Aaron. Rabbi Aaron, you know, once in a while you meet an exceptional person. Sometimes it's a, an exceptional tzaddik, someone who's really amazingly righteous, or someone who's very, like a, an amazing leader. You Sometimes in your profession you'll meet someone who just outshines everybody else, just truly exceptional. And I was sort of wondering recently, are certain people just gifted this ability that, you know, whatever area they go into, they're just going to be great. And there's the rest of us regular people that will just be regular. Or there's certain tips or tools or traits or, you know, some capacities of that is something that any person, so to speak, might be able to tap into to become great and exceptional. But if we just understood what it was and we're willing to put the work into it, we too could be, so to speak, exceptional. How, how does that work? Great question, and uh, I, I question the question. Uh, I'm not sure in Jewish tradition there is uh, a um, encouragement to be exceptional. Uh, the encouragement of Judaism, you know, there is no mitzvah in the Torah, thou shalt succeed. There's no place that it says that. What it does say in the Torah is, Ubacharta b'chayim. 
choose life. And that's what we're here to do, not to succeed, but to live a whole life, a good life, a righteous life. And uh, we're in a world that really very much um, uh, worships the exceptional. But I don't think Judaism encourages us to make that a high value. The high value of Judaism is balance. That's what we should be exceptional in. And very often, people that are exceptional are not balanced. The way they got exceptional is by giving up everything else in their lives, you know, like, I mean, not everybody, but rarely do you have a person that is an exceptional athlete and also a great husband and a great father and, and a great son. And, you know, it somehow yeah, all the efforts went into becoming an athlete at the expense of other areas of life. And uh, and that that's the interesting thing that our goal is to be a whole balanced person. And very often when you have an exceptional musician, is because they gave their entire life to music uh, at the cost of, you know, I, of course, there are exceptions to the rule. That's what makes them exceptional. But nonetheless, uh, very often that's what happens. And so, you know, if, if we want to be exceptional, we want to be exceptionally balanced and, 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 and not. So you will meet people that, you know, that are very, very special and, you um, but I don't think we should try to be special. I think special people are people that don't try to be special. It's not even on their minds as a great value that they want to demonstrate they can be. And I think that's why they, they rise to the top. What they just try to do is, is their responsibilities and, 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 and live in service. So mm -hmm. there are people that, you know, uh, will 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 ident we will identify as being you know these are these are extraordinary people but i don't think they tried to be extraordinary people uh you know moses didn't try to be moses <laughs> in fact here is a man who is uh who, who 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 god chooses to be the leader of jewish people and he is very resistant to it and even uh, uh, somewhat puts up a, a bit of an argument with Hashem that he's not the right one and, and, and take his brother. And, uh, you know, it's like it's it's not the people that that try to get center stage that are the people in our tradition that got center stage. The people who ended up having center stage, they weren't looking for that. That wasn't important to them. It's just like, you know, in Jewish tradition, a person who runs after honor, uh, honor runs away from them. And a person that runs away from honor, honor runs after them. Meaning if you really, really want to be acknowledged, it, it, it'll only be if you don't want to be acknowledged and it doesn't matter to you and you're not interested in it. Hmm. You know, I love what you're saying because it's actually not what I thought you would be saying. I thought we'd be having a conversation about what are certain traits that exceptional people have that, you know, uh, those of us who don't feel like we're, you know, on the above average spectrum in whatever area we're admiring somebody in, what we can try to learn from and integrate. That's where I thought we might be going. But I think what's very powerful about what you're sharing here is that, it again, it often happens when we have our conversations. It totally turns my perspective. Everything you're saying really hits home and makes sense, but it's totally different change in terms of what's our focus. Our focus is not in being exceptional. My focus is on achieving balance, which sounds so simple, but I think all of us who are constantly working on this, that in of itself is such a challenge to really try to achieve a sense of balance in all these different as areas and, and um, aspects of our lives. Yeah, you know, I remember a neighbor of mine made this comment how she always taught her, her son to be average. I never heard anybody say such a thing. And I was taken aback by that. Uh, I said, average? She said, yeah, because when you tell people to be the best, there is no best. It, it, it's, it's, it's an illusion best because to be the best at something, you'd have to know every other human being on the planet. And that's not possible. She said, uh, she said that she finds that when people have this pressure to be the best, uh, that could end up putting them at their worst. But she wanted her son just to be, you know, a good guy, you know, not great, good. And I and I do think 
that this is a, a problem for a lot of parents that we are trying to encourage our kids. We want our kids to be exceptional. And I think there's a tremendous amount of stress. I think that's why, you know, maybe, I don't know for sure, but I think, you know, in terms of the statistics of teenage depression, teenage uh, teenagers using, you know, uh, medication for depression, the, uh, suicide, I think our kids are under a tremendous amount of pressure to be exceptional. And I think parents are loading their kids up with, uh, you know, this course and, and, and wanting them to be a genius in math and science, but also a, a, a master of guitar and piano, while, of course, being the star basketball player and, um, you know, there's a company called Baby Einstein, and it's toys that they make, to, you know, so to speak, with the intention of getting your kid to be an Einstein. But the truth is that Baby Einstein himself didn't have any of these toys. His parents probably gave him like an egg carton or some, you know, old, you know, the, what's left of the rolls of toilet paper. And that's why he became so ingenious is because he, he really... T took very minimal things and, and creatively thought what he could do with it. So I think when we want our kids to be Einstein, uh, I don't I don't think his parents wanted him to be Einstein. I think he, I, I think what happens is people that kind of float to the top in extraordinary ways are really, I think, people that so wanted that. And that was the center focus of their life because I think that, would make a lot of people very neurotic and prone to a lot of depression. Hmm. So it's sort of like an irony because I, I would have thought in the sense that the people who want it, it bad enough and work really, really hard at something are the ones who really rise above. And it's almost like the opposite from what you're saying is sometimes if you want something so much, it sort of will go against you because as you're saying, part of the price you pay for going to any extreme is you don't have a sense of balance in your life and a person who's going to be successful needs that balance or the price to pay for that success. Uh, you can say, oh, he was a very successful in his career, but if a person's family life has fallen apart completely, then how successful, so to speak, are they when you look at the complete picture of one's life? So that's a very, very important point, I think, for anyone listening who's trying to maybe push themselves a bit in maybe one specific area, realizing there's a price to pay in other areas of our life when we try to go to these extremes. But even more so, what you're saying is a lot of times it's counterintuitive, but which is why it's good you're bringing it out, but that pushing ourselves so hard and pushing our kids so hard, it actually brings about the opposite of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, not always. There are people that will tell you that they became the best because they gave it their all. But now the question is, what's the definition of the best? This guy's the best guy in the stock market, but the worst husband and father. I mean, I met a fellow who was a very successful fellow in investments, but he was a very depressed guy. And when I met him, I saw on his desk a picture of five beautiful redheaded children, which I have a bit of an affinity for because I want the uh, the redheaded race to continue, you know, being a redhead myself. <laughs> and I and I said, oh, those are such cute kids. They're your kids. And he said, sadly, yes. And I said, why are you so sad? He said, well, my 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 wife and I are divorced. I don't get a chance to see them that much. Um, my my wife fell in love with the gardener, and now he lives in my mansion. And well, you know what happened is this guy was working so hard to be the best in investments, but he was never home. So who was home? The gardener. So his wife fell in love with the gardener, and now the gardener has an estate, <laughs> and half you know living off of half his uh, his assets because of the divorce settlement. So we have to be very careful. What is our definition of being exceptional in Judaism? We want to be exceptionally balanced. Hmm. So that really means that if I find myself, you know, putting too much effort into any one area of life, although sometimes that does have to be the case. I mean, I think, let's say if a person's working on a career, especially at the beginning, there are times where one does have to go to a little bit of an extreme of putting a lot of time into trying to get something off the floor, you know, ground. Um, if well, someone's it's okay. learning. It's okay. You know, it's just uh, I, I, I m might have probably shared that, you know, on my little hobbies is matchmaking and someone 
suggested that I meet with this fellow who was in his 40s. And he was, uh, just happens to be tonight, I'm talking about a guy that's uh, very much in the stocks and he had his own company. And I met with the guy and he didn't even look at me. The whole time he was looking at screens and you could see how incredibly anxious he was. And he said, somebody says you could help me find somebody. And I said, actually, I don't think I can. He's just not present. So, you know, if you want, if you, you, you got to be present with what you're doing and who you're with. Hmm. When you return, Soul Talk, Rabbi David Aaron and Leora Mandel. The Tamar Yona Show. Tamar? She's sassy. She's smart. She's funny. But she's also a real Jewish mother. Hi, everybody. I'm Tamar Yona. And yes, I can be all of those things. But at Israel News Talk Radio, I'm here to bring you the news stories and guests that you may not hear anywhere else. Join me live on air Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays for the most unique and bold talk radio in Israel. The Tamar Yona Show. Shalom. I'm Leah Haroni. Join me on my show, News from the Torah. Each Sunday, we'll use the weekly Torah portion as a prism for understanding the news today. Listen to news from the Torah to gain clarity about the times we're living in and to understand your own spiritual path in the process. News from the Torah every Sunday on Israel News Talk Radio. Welcome to Soul Talk, Leora Mandel with Rabbi David Aaron, talking about how to achieve uh, our greatness, but being exceptional in, this is the irony, is that the goal is not to try to achieve, uh, our, you know, aim for the greatest and try to be as exceptionally as we can. The goal is actually to try to be balanced, which <laughs> is a very, it's a different direction, but it's a very, also a very difficult task, but it's a task that will actually being balanced. I think if we take a step back and think about it, that is what will tr- bring to true joy and happiness, not necessarily being the best and the greatest in any given area. Um, that said, okay, there is the idea of being exceptional in terms of the perspective of the world, but there's also the idea of being my greatest self. So on the one hand, I mean, is, is the goal of, and the way for me to be my greatest self by achieving balance? Or is there sometimes where there's maybe I recognize within myself, I have a certain ability, but I think all of us know any ability, even if we're given it as a gift in terms of having a certain talent, may, um, we still have to put a lot of work and effort into it. So how do we find this balance, so to speak, between finding balance in our life, but still achieving our own personal greatness in an area that maybe we really have a capacity for, but not going to an extreme in really tapping into our our abilities. Right. Um, Our sages tell us that each and every one of us has the ability to be as great as Moses. Uh, But that contradicts what the Torah says about Moses, that there was never a prophet, and there will never be a prophet like Moses. So how can our sages tell us that each and every one of us has the ability to be as great as Moses? Uh, not it, They weren't referring to being as great as Moses as a prophet, but what Moses is described in, and it's in our actually our Saturday prayers, our Shabbat prayers, it says, Yismach Moshe b'madnat chalko ki evin ne'aman karatolo. Moses is very happy and rejoices in the gift that God called him a devoted servant. And that's what everybody can be. We can be as great as Moses in the service of what we have come to this world to do. And so that's what we have to start with. Asking ourselves, what is our service? Now, our service is not just in terms of some kind of, you know you know, job, our service is, how do I serve well my spouse? How do I serve well my children? How do I serve well my community? But to live in service, that's, you know, what it's all about. You know, if I were a light bulb, then to be my greatest self would be to shine and and to illuminate a room. And if somehow I thought my greatest self was to get everybody to think I'm wonderful and get headlines, like, no, 
it's about bringing light to people. Um, and so too, we, we all have different facets of service that we are responsible in. And we should try to do all those services in the most complete way we can. But it starts off with, I want to be an Evid Ne'eman. I want to be, I want to live in service. See, most people, they live to have. Uh, you know, they want to have more. Having more doesn't make you more. You don't become more by having more. You become more by doing more. And, 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 and that's what it's about. It's like, it sounds so simple, but it is what it's about. It's a haftalarecha kamocha, love your neighbor as yourself. That is the golden rule, and all of Torah is to enable us to fulfill that, you know, that role of being someone who who loves and cares and helps and contributes. So putting this together with the idea of balance, I think what we all have to do is really sort of like take a few steps back and say, okay, I'm here to serve. What are the different areas of my life that I am in service? So if I'm married to my spouse, if I'm a parent to my children, if I'm working as my job, if I'm part of my community, what aspects of the community am I in service? I Meaning all these things, but then to sort of also do this evaluation is, is my, are my acts of service, is there balance within them? And I think you're right. So often, let's say there might be a person who's known as an exceptional community service person. They are the one to call. They're always there. But is that coming at the expense of their being home for their own family? And if that's the case, there's something out of balance. So you're right. They're exceptional, but they're exceptional in a way that from the outside may look wonderful. But in the reality of their life, there isn't this balance. So that really, I mean, you're giving perspective of what we really have to do here in order to be able to you know, be in service, which is what helps us achieve um, greatness for ourselves, but to make sure we take a step back and make sure there's balance within it. You know, I had a student and her father was a very, very famous doctor in the in the city that she grew up. He was very well known for his extraordinary acts of kindness as a doctor. Only problem is he was an incredibly abusive father. He actually once gave his daughter a, a black eye. And you say, how is this possible that this fellow can be considered to be the nicest, most caring doctor in the entire city, but when he comes home, he is capable of giving his own daughter a black eye? And it's because it wasn't really about service. It was about just himself. He wanted to feel good about himself. His daughter was not a source of feeling good about himself. But getting the community to acknowledge him made him feel good about himself. And that's where it becomes complicated or very easy for self-delusion. Is, is this about me uh, and getting everybody to tell me I'm great? Or is this about, you know, really doing good? Um, I, I met this fellow who as, uh, you know, uh, who, who began to realize that he's avoiding going home. He goes home, but he goes home very late and he gets up very early and he spends most of his life in the office. That's because in the office, he's a somebody. You know, his employees admire him and 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 compliment him. And, and, and seeing the profits that he's making is giving him this immediate feedback and look how great I am. But when he gets home, he's not getting that kind of feedback. And so he doesn't go home. Again, is this the greatest version of myself? And so we have to be so careful that we we really do live, and it's about service. And I had shared this in a talk that I had with a family. And, and the family had a teenager boy. And I said, you know, there's three things. There's looking good, there's feeling good, and doing good. And most people are really very much focused on looking good. Uh, of course, everybody wants to feel good, but they think by looking good, they'll feel good. But Judaism says, by doing good, you'll feel good. So the teenager boy of the family argued with me. He said he doesn't think it's true. He said, if you look good, then you want to do good. And he had it all, all flipped around that his primary focus was to look good, and he felt that looking good would facilitate him doing good and then feeling good. 
And uh, really, we need to just focus on do good. Do good for your spouse, for your children, for your community, for your for your colleagues, for your friends. Let's, let's always look for an opportunity to do good uh, and, and not identify oneself as a go-getter, but a go-giver. So really, again, it's it's the balance, because if I'm doing good in all these different aspects of my life, I have that balance. Now, a, a question, I, I, so, I think I asked it a little bit earlier, but I want to bring it back out again. You know, sometimes within ourselves, we recognize I have a certain ability, but in order to really bring it about, I'd have to devote a lot of time to it. It may take me a bit out of balance. Or you know, our child, sometimes you see your child as a certain talent, and you almost want to give them opportunities to develop that talent to become, so to speak, exceptional. And they could. The question is, is that it almost sounds like it might not be the best thing for myself or even for my child for me to almost push that because that often you're right. It does take a person's life out of balance. It's almost like sometimes people with tremendous gifts, the gift can also be to a degree a curse because it could take over one's life. So what does one do if within themselves or even especially in a child, you see they have maybe naturally a certain gift, but the question is how much do you push them, so to speak, to develop it? or give them opportunities to do so because it might take us out of this balance. Well, I, I don't have one, one answer that fits all. We, we have to really tune in in the kid, but I don't, I, I, I it, it, it is a possibility that facilitating this talent too much where it becomes the central focus of this child's life is not a good thing unless it's a talent that serves, but, I was at a friend's home and his little daughter was there and she told me that she has been chosen to be in the Chidon Tanakh, which is the which is the is the scriptures contest in the school. And uh, that's an amazing, uh, wow, that's a compliment that she's learning Torah so well that she's been, she's a little girl, she's like nine years old and she's been placed in the finals for the, um, you know, for this uh, Bible contest, so to speak. So I said to her, do you, you want to be a teacher? And she said, no, I want to be a dancer. <laughs> so, and I see that she really wants to be a dancer because when you're a dancer, you get a lot more attention because you're on stage. And when you're, uh, you know, uh, some expert or a, a teacher of Torah, you, you're not, you don't get as much, in her mind, I could see, she's not going to get as much, you know, attention. So, look, we all need attention. The question is, how much attention? I mean, we were with, with our grandchildren today by the playground, and constantly they're saying, you know, well, in Hebrew, it's Saba, grandfather, grandmother, Safta, look, look. They're constantly saying, look, look what I just did. Look, look. And I realized... You know, what happens to all those people that nobody looked at? What they will do to try and get the attention they didn't get as children. We, we don't want to build our lives around this desperate need to get attention when we should be building our lives around a desire to do good. Hmm. When we return, Soul Talk, Rabbi David Aaron and Leora Mandel. In a time where feelings have become fact, where rational thought and common sense has disappeared, one man stands above it all. I'm Howie Sobaker, your political hitman. Local Hitman airs every Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. North American time, 7 a.m. Israeli time, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Are you interested in transforming your life, drawing closer to the Creator, and uncovering the deeper meanings and hidden treasures in the Hebrew Bible? Then join me, Rav Yitzhak Michelson, and me, William Hall, on the Science of Kabbalah, where we are seeking to narrow the gap between what we understand of our physical and spiritual worlds. So make sure to tune in every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Israel Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on Israel News Talk Radio. Welcome back to Soul Talk, Leora Mandel with Rabbi David Aaron. 
understanding what does it mean to be exceptional. And I think it is exceptional, as you're saying, is not to try to achieve major exceptional achievements, but to try to achieve the exceptional aspect of having balance in our lives. That really is exceptional if we can achieve that. And that really is also the key to being happy and fulfilled and not just going to an extreme in one area. You know, I was thinking about it too, because there's such an emphasis in society of like, how are we judged? To a great degree, the first question when you meet somebody is, oh, what do you do? And it's sort of like your job is an achievement and it often is a definition of, well, who are you sizing a person up, um, how much have you achieved and, and talk also, you know, lists of achievements. And it's interesting that I think the true achievements, you can have a person who has a tremendous uh, resume, but has no balance in their life. And because of that tremendous resume, other aspects of life that bring tremendous fulfillment there, as you were pointing out, you know, you brought very unfortunate examples of let's say family life falling apart completely so how exceptional am i if it's true if it's one in area um, but it's not in that balance of life so you know i think this conversation we're having is so important because this message from society is you need to be exceptional and if you're exceptional you'll get a lot of attention and we sort of as you're pointing out even from a very young age we have this need for attention as opposed to realizing that maybe our goal shouldn't be greatness our goal should be as you're saying balance and Balance actually is true greatness. Look, you know, I, I have a little saying that great people are grateful people. And I think we, we if, if we start off with being exceptional at being grateful, <laughs> grateful for who we are, grateful for the people in our lives, grateful for the opportunity we have to do good, you know, but um, very often what drives people towards becoming these exceptionally talented people is they're not they're never satisfied and uh, they're, they're always working harder and trying to get beyond and I'm not against constant approval improvement but uh, it goes back to I think we tend to uh, identify one area in our lives which becomes the source of our self-worth and our self-worth should be based on being in service of God. And being in service of God means to serve to bring divine values and vision into the world, which is to bring kindness and compassion and truth and peace and, and justice. And, you know, that, that's what it means to serve God. And um, very often people are very lopsided in, in that they've identified one part of their life and that becomes where they seek fulfillment and self-worth and again that's not a whole person that's not a balanced person so you know, i've often heard this idea that you know you're either a player in life or a spectator and i think the thought is like a player you're active you're busy you're doing you're trying to achieve you're not satisfied you got to be in the game the spectator is more of a passive person who's sitting and watching and not really motivated to do much beyond is just happy to watch everyone else do all the work and in a sense i'm like i'm trying to figure this out now because on the one hand um i think i'm understanding and I, I'm, it makes sense to me that you know being too much of a player there's a price to pay for that and we often lose balance and it's not that's not really what true greatness is just because you're getting all the attention and the focus and there is something to being grateful for what i have and not always needing to achieve more and more and more and more on the other hand how do i find this balance of not just becoming like a passive person that's just you know there's there's pros every trait has its pros and cons on the one hand always needing to do more and achieve more and having that energy can accomplish a lot, but it can also take a person away from other aspects of life that are important and lose balance. Being happy with what you have and being, you know, not always needing to achieve more for my self-worth is there's a good side to that. But maybe I won't accomplish as much as I could if I had a little more drive. So how do we find this balance even within these traits? Well, I, I think we need to start off with identifying what are my responsibilities? Um, because... Uh, you know, you, you could have a person who has, a, you know, a, 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 a talent, a born talent, but start off with what are my responsibilities and how can my talent serve to help me fulfill my responsibilities? But when it's when it just goes back to me, 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 and I want to be center stage and I want to be, you know, in the spotlight 
uh, it's not a recipe for fulfillment and true happiness. For, I, I mean, I don't know every single person is in that situation, but you hear about stars that are lonely, stars that are depressed. It's like stardom does not uh, really address what people were actually looking for in their search for stardom. You know, we feel good when we do good and we help other people. So how does this work? I mean, I, I totally hear that. But then it gets tricky when we get into, you know, areas of life where someone is, let's say, a community advocate and they do really, really good, important work or they start some sort of charitable organization um, or they're an exceptional teacher. And, you know, on the one hand, if I really would take a step back and say, why am I doing this? Because I believe in helping other people. There's important causes that wouldn't, you know, this is charity is very important. Or I have a passion for teaching and, and changing the world through, you know, affecting young minds. And that's true. But there often can also be in this mix, you know, again, it can get out of balance of I feel more self-worth because people look up to me. So especially in these realms where on the one hand it is an act of service, but even acts of service, if they're not, you know, we, if we aren't absolutely honest with ourselves, we can also get this out of balance and become exceptional, but at the paying the price of losing other parts of our lives that are important. Right. Well, I, I probably told you the story about I was at a conference teaching and I was running around teaching here and there. And I met this older rabbi and I got into a very interesting conversation with him and I've only I only talked to this man maybe 20 minutes, but what he said to me 20 minutes lasted my whole life. Uh, one of the things I asked this rabbi is, uh, how do I know everything I'm doing isn't just my ego? And he said, why is that a question? I said, what do you mean was a question? I want to be doing this if this is just about my ego. He said, are you doing good? I said, yeah, I think I'm doing good. He says, are you, are you, are you trying to rip anybody off? He says, no. I, he said, are you trying to take advantage of anybody? I said, no. So say so, so you want to help people. I said, yeah. He says, forget about it. You know, this is just your evil inclination by saying maybe ego. So we have to also be very careful. There's nothing wrong with getting ego strokes. The question is, what is actually going on? Are you helping people or not? You get some ego strokes. Don't worry about that. You know, enjoy the ego strokes as long as it doesn't become what drives you and it ends up driving you to do bad things and actually not live the service that you're meant to live. But I, I go back to it like uh, we need to, and I've tried very hard to keep a balance on one hand being out there writing books and teaching, and but also being very much here for my, my wife and my kids. And uh, I know my daughter told me that she had a friend whose father was a well-known rabbi, and the daughter would share with my daughter how her father was never around. Or when he was around, he always had students at the home, and she grew up with a lot of resentment, feeling that she was abandoned by her father. And uh, thank God my daughter uh, did uh, bear testimony that I didn't do that. So thank God, you know, that's what we need to do is we need to have a lot of balls in the air that we're juggling and do the best we can. So that's my point. And as we started off, that exceptional sometimes ends up with a person who just focuses on one ball and drops all the other ones. And that's how they became so good at what they're doing. But that's not the ideal of a Jewish life. I, I really like that idea of the uh, of the balls. Um, but I guess also the challenge is sometimes we can get so focused on trying to balance it all, not to let any of them fall, that we don't can't take that step back that is so crucial, as you're explaining, that we really have to, from time to time, take a step back to evaluate. You know, just make sure that am I really doing this for the right reasons? Do I have the right balance? We're so in, in the process of balancing that we can lose sight of if we're actually properly uh, balancing things correctly. But I think what would so help. Well, that's about why it's good to have a, some kind of a mentor, because mm -hmm. I don't know when I'm inside whether I'm so reliable in evaluating how I'm doing. So uh, I know it takes a lot of guts, but it's a good thing to ask somebody that you are close to and feel can be honest with you. Like, you know, where do you think I'm uh, maybe a little bit? out of balance you know one of my teachers pointed out that a lot of people are like 
a, a caricature. You know, when an artist uh, draws a picture, but it's a caricature, <clears throat> then it looks like that person, but their nose is bigger than than, than usual, or their ears. In other words, the picture has it has a funny proportionality to it. So what's amazing about these <clears throat> these artists that can draw a caricature is it does look like you, but it's funny because the proportions are off. And so that's the question. Am I, am I, have I become a caricature of myself? Hmm. You notice these images of juggling the balls and the caricature uh, are very powerful. And in a sense, because you can't see yourself unless you look in a mirror, and a mirror to a great degree in our situation is what you're talking about, having a mentor or someone who can see a perspective of you that you can't see of yourself to really see how am I looking right now? How is this working? Cause I'm so into myself. I can't fully see it. So that really is so crucial. And I have to say, there's just such powerful points we've really covered today because uh, it's so different, I think. And I think than what we oftentimes think of, and especially the message society is sending us is that we have to push ourselves and achieve and be the most we can be. And I think what you're really pointing out is that so much can get lost if that really is our goal. And often, oftentimes, not always, but often when that's our goal, we don't achieve it anyhow, and we lose a lot along the way. So really, this refocus of the focus is balance. And as much as we can achieve balance, that truly is an exceptional thing. I want to thank you all for joining us. Soul Talk, Rabbi David Ed. Aaron and Leora Mandel. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips with scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. Howdy, this is Rita from League City, Texas, now living in Israel. And though my heart may have belonged to Texas, it now belongs to Israel and all the fantastic show hosts at Israel News Talk Radio. Hi, this is Michael Solomon from Kiryat Arba, Israel. And why do I love listening to Israel News Talk Radio? Because I love listening to the interesting interviews they do and their news reporting that most other media sources don't cover. Hey, this is Nicole Eko from Malmo, Sweden. It gets pretty cold here in Sweden, so I love cuddling up with a warm cup of tea while I listen to Israel News Talk Radio. Hey, everybody, this is Frank Carr from Tennessee. Me and my dog Buster really love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. <laughs> You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio.